Last year I did like a little bit of a write up. full-time ceramic artist in Calgary, Alberta and I do a lot of like studio vlog type things <laughs> and if you're not new here, hi! Well, I feel very strange on camera because I haven't um, picked it up in like quite a while. This is also like my first day um, back at work with the intention to actually work and not just organize the studio. It's been like a minute, I guess. I never really thought of myself as a perfectionist because I'm very like do things on the fly and especially with ceramics I don't need things to be perfect I like that they're imperfect I like that they feel handmade like a human made them and not a machine but perfectionism is not just only trying to do things perfectly it's also well I guess I mean maybe it is because part of it is the fear that comes with doing something you want to do something you want to accomplish but being afraid that you're not going to be able to execute it well enough so then what's even the point point? and then you just procrastinate and procrastinate and then you don't do it and i'm finding i'm like stuck in a lot of that right now and i'm also really realizing that that's been like an ongoing problem for a really long time and so i'm trying to like change the way i think about things that i make in terms of content i guess sometimes i see people put out these really like polished deep meaningful videos and i'm like wow that's so cool i wish i could do that i think i can do that but at the same time I don't even know if I want to do that. I don't know if this is gonna make any sense when I'm chopping it together at the end. But then I also think there's definitely a place for like riff raff, just on the fly kind of vlogs too, right? Like that's all I've been doing this whole time anyway and I've been having fun with it and maybe I'm just like not having as much fun anymore. I don't know. I think a huge part of all of this is just like, I am waiting, we're waiting to get into our new house and that's like all I can think about. It's always in the back of my mind. At this time of filming, we are four days out from doing the walkthrough, so we'll actually get to see it again. Again, if you're new, we bought a house, but we bought it like two and a half months ago, and so we've just been kind of waiting to get possession on it. So anyway, long story short, that's all I'm thinking about. That's all I'm excited for, and so it's like really hard to focus in on anything else. Anyway, I don't want to overshare on the internet more than I already do, but that's kind of where I'm at starting the new year. I guess I just wanted to kind of like explain where my mind's at. But I am excited to be in the studio and I'm excited to work on stuff. If the vision board video goes up before this, you know that I just like don't really wanna share what I'm doing until it's at least in progress because I talked about this in my last year's video on making the tiger collection. There are definitely some pros to keeping things that you wanna do close to your heart in terms of not getting the gratification of it being done just by telling people about it. So sometimes when you talk about what you wanna do, you already feel like that boost of, oh, I've done it by telling people that's what you're gonna do. And I don't wanna take away any of the magic of what is to come. Hopefully nobody minds, but there's gonna be a lot of like new house videos coming in soon because I'm just really excited about getting the new house together and I hope you are too. Excited to see how I set up my new space. There will be lots of Remy, don't worry, he will be in like every video. <laughs> Here we are again. I have my notes from last year's year of the tiger collection and we're obviously gonna do a year of the rabbit collection this year, um, but I just need to do some planning. So first of all, it is the year of the water rabbit. Let's see what we got. The Lunar New Year is so early this year that my collection is not gonna be ready on time. It's January 22nd, which is like a week away, and I'm moving in that time. So my vision is to hold off, really dial in on this collection and just make it my spring collection as well. So it'll be both celebrating Year of the Rabbit, but also celebrating the spring solstice. And I'm really hoping to drop it on the spring solstice. That is like my vision and my plan in terms of how I have booked my firings for the next three months. I'm gonna do some research, I'm gonna do some planning, I'm gonna come back and then we're gonna chat about what what we're doing. Okay, see you in a second.
Okay, so from what I'm understanding, the year of the rabbit is going to be kind of the opposite of the year of the tiger. So where the year of the tiger was like more about power, being bold and courageous, going big and like achieving goals, the year of the rabbit will be a lot more gentle and tender and more about rest and nurturing and contemplation. Not to say that you know, things won't still be happening and it's all just gonna be downtime. But that's kind of the vibe. So the year of the rabbit is bringing in yin energy, so passive, manifesting relaxation, fluidity, quietness. The year of the tiger brought in yang energy. And along with this comes a lot of adapting as a rabbit would, a lot of quick movement, so it could involve some travel. And apparently the rabbit is the most gentle and tender of the zodiac animals. So that's very interesting to think about because I had originally picked my word of the year for this year for my business to be growth, which I still think fits, but I want to say that the word should go in line with nurture because I think obviously those two things are very interconnected, you know. They were moving into a new house. I'm gonna be doing a lot of nesting and resting, hopefully. That makes me very excited for this year coming up. So having all that in mind, I think that also ties in really well to combine the concept of a Lunar New Year collection and a Spring Solstice collection because I think those two things go hand in hand in terms of spring kind of being a revival and a rebirth of nature, as well as probably people, right? Everybody kind of comes alive in the spring again, especially after a hard winter where we should be hibernating, but for some reason, January 1st, we're supposed to like go, go, go again. I don't understand it and I never will. I think it's also gonna be a good reminder to like stay quite fluid and adaptable and go with the flow which is already like always one of the things I try to keep in mind throughout the year, especially running a small business and being self-employed. I feel like there's a lot of times when you just kind of have to go with the flow and that's just it. Okay, let's see like what the colors are. Lucky colors. You know what's funny is that like, it depends on what site you go to to do your research. And obviously I'm leaning more into like the Chinese side. The Lunar New Year is celebrated in multiple Asian cultures. It's not just China, but I'm Chinese, so that's what we're going with. So here it says lucky colors, red, pink, purple, blue. But then this other one says, blah, 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 blah. derived from both wood and water elements and the yin polarity of the year of the rabbit, lucky colors are azure blue and apple green. Okay, all right, get specific. Lucky month, the month of March belongs to the rabbit. Okay, you know what? This is all aligning. I'm I'm reading all this, learning all this real time with you. Growing up, we did celebrate Chinese New Year, Lunar New Year, but it wasn't until like way later in life, like I'd say the last few years that I've like really started to learn more and more about the Chinese Zodiac, the month of March. I love it. Okay, so we're doing the launch in March, which is so exciting because I was already thinking that. See, and then this is lucky colors are blue, green, yellow, and black. So I don't know who to believe, you know? So we have some, we have some ideas. We have some things. I will pin this to my wall like I did with the year of the tiger. So last year I did like a little bit of a write up, words to keep in mind, lucky numbers, lucky colors, all that. And then I also had like a little page of sketches of kind of like some shapes and ideas. It's so funny because obviously I ended up doing a full year of tiger pieces. The first drop was the most special to me. Um, they're all very special in their own way, but because it was the first time I was doing it, it was extra special. Um, but look at this little drawing of the tiger mug with like the tail around the back. That's so funny. I wonder how many of those I've made I made in 2022, I think I made like a couple hundred, which is wild and really fun. So let's draw out some ideas for the year of the rabbit. I actually got recently, because of what I'm planning to do, which is a lot of colored clay hand building work, I did end up getting some little rabbit cookie cutters just to make my life a little bit easier. And they came in all these different shapes. Who knew they had like a full set of rabbit well, I mean, it makes sense. I guess Easter, Easter cookies. But I have a couple rabbits here. This is just like a funny little cartoon rabbit shape. But 
And they also sent a carrot. So I'm gonna use these, but I think I'm just gonna like try and make my first piece today. I think I'm gonna keep it chill and I'm gonna just try and make a plate or a bowl and kind of just like experiment with that first. I did, did film a little bit the other day I was in here. So I have worked in here, I guess like one day so far. Basically what I need to do today is make a bunch of stained clay samples. If you saw all those little Tupperwares with all my mason stains in them in the bathroom, I'm gonna try mixing a bunch of them just into plain white clay and we're gonna fire them to cone six all the way through so I can kind of see what the colors look like when they are fully fired. And because it's really hard to know when you just mix it into the clay just by looking at it, how vibrant it's going to be. For example, the blue palette cups that I did I don't remember if I had showed myself throwing them, but the difference between the white and the blue colored clay didn't look that different when it was on the wheel, but once it was fired, this is the difference between the two. As you can see, the blue clay came out a lot more tinted than I was expecting, which is a good thing. I've had a lot of trouble with this pink burning out. I think it's Alpine Rose Mason Stain, um, so I'm definitely gonna test that one. Just get my hands dirty for the first time this year. Uh, in clay. We're just gonna do that and see what happens. I've been coloring clay and making little test tiles. It's really hard to tell what color this will be just by looking at it. It looks like the white clay. You can't really tell. But I've written the color number for the stain that I've used. I mixed up batches of colored clay. So this is about a pound and a half with a blue stain and I just wrote how much of the stain I added to it in how much clay and then made a little test tile from it. Keeping this in like a moist sealed Ziploc bag for now and that's something I learned from the women in clay class. I think Linda Sao, Sao, I don't know how to pronounce her last name. I'm so sorry Linda, but great teacher That's how she kind of showed us that she has her clay stored So that's what I'm doing for now and these I'll get fired this weekend, which is really exciting. So I want to make Tests of all the current stains that I have and I'm gonna get a few more stains from the ceramic supply store over the next couple weeks So today I'm just gonna do like an example sample piece.
work days a little bit better in terms of editing videos and also working in the studio. So I thought I'd show you a little behind the scenes that right now I am waiting. <laughs> There's my tripod. I'm waiting for these plates to set up and dry a little bit so that I can trim them. And in the meantime, I have my laptop and I am currently editing a video that is due today because I'm really bad with deadlines. Um, I'm a procrastinator through and through. And so <laughs> in case you were interested in like what an actual day at work looks like for me, it's a lot of hands-on studio stuff and then like computer admin video editing. I very luckily have this nice chaise to hang out on because otherwise I'd just be uncomfortable sitting in a chair. I'm being realistic with myself and I don't think I'm gonna make it to the ceramic shop today, which means I'm just gonna go on Friday after an appointment in the morning. I think I'll just spend Friday like mixing stain test to fire and that'll just be the plan. Also before I leave today, I have to tidy up the studio because I have a meeting with my new accountant at the studio tomorrow which is like <laughs> very exciting but also a little bit nerve-wracking because I want it to actually like look nice in here <laughs> when it comes and I want to look a little bit professional. Today is just like coming to an end, I think. Hello, I just had my meeting with my accountant. I'm in trouble. No, just kidding, I'll be fine. I'm trying to get myself like way more organized this year. The actual business side of running a business, I am so not knowledgeable <laughs> in all these business things. Okay, let me interrupt for a second to say thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. You may know Skillshare for classes in photography, film, video editing, and illustration, but did you know Skillshare has hundreds of career-focused classes too? This year, as I mentioned in my planning of the year vision board video, I want to work on my productivity, my time management, kind of using my time more wisely to learn and understand how I can maybe run my business better. As much as I love, love, love my job, I want to make more time for the things I enjoy outside of it. The best thing about having so much studio alone time is that I can do a lot of passive learning, whether that means listening to a class while I'm working, while I'm throwing on the wheel. I have been listening to this class while working in the studio called Productivity for Artists, Organizing Yourself for Success. As you can see from the class titles, Brooke Glazer goes into tips for time management, advice for when you're being a bit of a workaholic. There are so many classes to explore on Skillshare, whether you want to look into freelance and entrepreneurship, how to start your own business, increase your creative confidence, there is tons for you to explore. If you're interested in trying out Skillshare, the first thousand people to use the link in my description will get a one month free trial. And thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. We left it with like a checklist of things I need to do, gather some accounting info for 2022, get some accounting software to actually like keep track of things. My brain is already such like a scrambly place to be. So I think anything I can do to make my life a little bit easier and not be scrambling at tax time is like so ideal. <laughs> I was joking with Rima, we were chatting about how, was this like a year ago, two years ago? Um, I just like could not stop talking about tax stuff every time I saw her because obviously she's a fellow small business owner and she <laughs> Finally to pull me aside and just be like hey, we, we can't talk about this every time we're hanging out Like it's stressing me out and I was like, oh, you know what good call. Thank you for putting up that boundary with me I'm really excited to have the accountant I have now. Like, I need as much help as I can get Anyway, I left these plates. I covered them last night Super simple to start because I'm just like trying this. I'm gonna see if these crack around the cutouts. I tried to compress everything with a rib as much as I could. There's obviously some little crease lines in there that I wanna smooth out some more, but I'm basically gonna trim the edges. You've seen me trim plates before on this channel. You know, some super simple bunny things coming up. I'm so excited to see how these turn out. I unfortunately won't be firing them for a while still. This is the other one for the year of the water rabbit. I don't know if anybody's actually gonna be interested in these. They are a bit of a departure from what I typically make but I'm just like having so much fun exploring this new uh, style of work and I can't wait to dig deeper into it. These are just, again, like pretty basic pieces to start, but I wanna get like fun and wild with it. We are three days out from doing our house walkthrough. I'm gonna mention this in every time I like turn the camera on and four days from actually getting possession. I was just thinking about how it's so much harder to feel like inspired and like excited to do things when you're surrounded by stuff that isn't yours and is not your vibe and like you just miss all your things because as cre human creatures 
the stuff we get to surround ourselves with is stuff that we love, right? Like I look at my studio and I'm just surrounded by so many things that bring me joy and are like bright and colorful and fun and just like make me so happy. So I've just been thinking about how that has had an effect on my creative brain. Like I do feel such a burst of energy and excitement coming into the studio now that I don't, I think I like definitely took it for granted when we were in our condo. Also surrounded by all our stuff, our beautiful homemade mugs and homemade plates and my plants. <sighs> I'm just here to quickly, very quickly, mix like a, tex a test glaze and to load the kiln. We have the walkthrough today of the house at 3 p.m. It's currently like one-ish. And so I'm gonna load the kiln. I decided to just like fire through a test plate because it had a crack in it already anyway just to see the colors and wow this is so cute I don't know what it will look like glazed over I tend to actually not really love this speckled clay glaze but cool very exciting this is just a little crack at the very bottom that you like it's not that noticeable but obviously would affect function of a plate <laughs> 